so tell me some of your family traditions. The guy was in his 70s, so I would like to learn a lot from people that are super successful. He says, every year, I take 89 of my family members on a vacation and I pay for the whole thing. I said, what? Really? He said, absolutely. Two weeks, I take him. What set of values and traditions do you want to pass down to your kids? Think about a person sitting there to think about that and say, hey, babe, this is one of what I want to pass down to my kids. Here's what I want them to be doing. These are our values. One of the things we talk about a lot in our family is lead, respect, improve, love. Those are four things we do as a family. We don't bully. We don't get bullied. And there's four things we pray for. Courage, wisdom, tolerance, understanding. Obviously, there's a lot of other values. I'm giving you the basic of what we teach. You can tell these families, think about these things, and it's repetitive, and they keep talking about it over and over and over again. I'll never forget a story Arnold told the first time he met when he mar married Maria Shriver. He said, the first time I met uh, one of the Kennedys, he says, so what's your favorite color? And he said, uh, we like red. He says, no, no, what's your favorite color? He says, yeah, we like the color red. He says, I, I I don't think, why are you saying we? What do you like? He says, we, the Kennedys, like the color red. Why would somebody say something like that? Because the family talks about, it. we like the color red. So how detailed is that to say, this is our color of what we like? Getting rich is different from staying rich, okay? Slow money, long money. The longer it takes, it eventually takes to accumulate the longer you hold on to it. They all spend 20 to 30 years building their wealth. Fast money, quick money, therefore 70% of lottery winners end up broke within a few years. Think about this. This is a study that MIT did. Didn't somebody just win $2 billion right now with the lottery? What do you think is going to happen with this regular person that gets $2 billion? You think they know how to manage $2 billion? If the person's never had a million dollars, their identity, if their job is $52,000 a year, they get $2 billion. What do you think you're going to be doing with that money? How quick? you think that goes away even though you may say come on pad you think a person can run through 1.9 billion dollars in no time yes absolutely because if you don't know how to manage it and if your identity doesn't believe you're worth 1.9 billion and you think you're only worth twenty two thousand dollars of savings in a bank somehow some way either someone's going to rob you of that money someone's going to take that money from you you're going to break the law you're going to pick up bad habits like drugs alcohol and then boom the money disappears most of the time according to mit the people who get rich quick lack something crucial to generational wealth generational wealth habits. This is exactly what we're talking about. So number one, they invest in sure bets. Number two, investing in appreciating assets. Three, structuring it generational. They think about how am I going to get this money to go to the kids and to grandkids? It is something they think about. Practicing apprenticeship. What can I do to develop these leaders? What can I do to teach my habits to them. They come to work. They see how mommy's working. They see how daddy's working. They see how you're growing your business. Whenever I'm doing a conference call, I like my kids to listen to many of these conference calls so they see how I'm negotiating. They see how I'm talking. And then afterwards, they'll ask me questions. That is a form of apprenticeship. My six-year-old daughter, I went home right now to pick up a few of these uh, kilo of gold because I was doing a video for gold. My daughter immediately, daddy, can I come back to the office? Can I come back? To she just wants to be here. And I'm like, a absolutely, you can come here. Today, she had to do homework and she had some things she had to do or else she would have been here. Think everything about duplicating good habits to your kids. Most of the time, kids will only see the bad habits, but think about what good habits we can duplicate to the kids. Being pioneers and trendsetters. So some of you guys may say, well, Pat, what do you want me to do with oil? That's already done. Railroad, who the hell is going on? I've never been on a train before. I'm not going to get on a train. Planes, what can I do that's going to be revolutionary? Either be revolutionary or join a revolutionary. Either be a pioneer or jump on a pioneer ship, plane, and say, I'm going with you. Wherever you're going, I'm going on this rocket. We're going places. I'm going to bring my value to you. But either way, either be a pioneer and trendsetter or join a pioneer and trendsetter. Changing the business with the changing times. They knew how to pivot and adjust. Recognizing and capitalizing opportunities. That's something you got to be thinking about and you got to be looking at. Teaching the family early, not waiting till later on to teach them the right habits. Staying away from the spotlight. Very interesting to say stay away from the spotlight. This is interesting where this was a big part of philosophy where they want to be a little, uh, little low key. Even if you think about the Koch brothers or Rothschild you don't hear a lot from them. You may even not be able to say that you hear a lot from many of these people who made their wealth then. It's very different today. It's hard for Bezos or Musk or a lot of these guys to stay away from the spotlight today because we have something called social media. And whether you like it or not, the media is going to somehow pull you in. But do your best to stay away from the spotlight. This is what some of these guys did. Leadership and family is based on merit, which means you got to earn it. Kind of like how I talk to my kids when I said, hey, what if one of you guys does something bad? Should that person still get the money? No, you should. You know, okay, great. Perfect. No problem. 
So families have certain set of values in place to get that wealth. You talk about that early. Very simple. The other day I was walking with uh, one of my neighbors. This guy's family, they have 7,000 employees, classy guy. While we're walking, and uh, this is uh, Halloween and we're doing trick-or-treating. While we're walking, his son walks by and uh, so... Hey, how you doing? Great. Mom, well, his son's playing football. And he says, um, yeah, he lost his technology privileges for seven weeks. I said, what do you mean technology privileges? He says, yeah, he lost his technology privileges. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, iPhone, video games, stuff like that. I said, why did he lose it? He says, oh, in our family, very basic, in our family, if you don't have straight A's, you lose technology privileges. I said, really? He said, yeah. If you don't have straight A's, you lose technology privileges. Think about that. So I sat there. And I came back and I said, I've been thinking about a way to talk to my kids about getting a phone because a lot of people are having phones. Uh, they say, oh, how am I, I going to get these guys the phones? Now, there's a system. So the point is, leadership in family is based on merit. That's a merit. You want technology? You got to make sure you have straight A's. So these are some of the things that you borrow to create in your own family. Next, maintaining strong family connections, keeping people together, reunions, traveling together. I remember I was dealing with this one insurance guy, very, very successful guy. And one day I'm sitting down with him, talking to him. I said, so tell me some of your family traditions. The guy was in his 70s, so I would like to learn a lot from people that are super successful. He says, every year I take 89 of my family members on a vacation and I pay for the whole thing. I said, what? Really? He said, absolutely. Two weeks I take him. I said, are you joking? He says, no. He says, let me show you some pictures. He shows me. This is a cruise. This is 89 of us. And he starts telling me, I started doing this 20 years ago. First one we did was only 11 of us. Then it went to 15. Then it went to 20. Imagine the pictures he's shown every year. He says, now it's 89. All these grandkids, all these boyfriends and girlfriends. He says, 89, we go together. I said, why do you do this? He says, believe it or not, it keeps the family united. We're all together. I'm like, wow, very interesting. He told me this in 2009 when I started the insurance company, 14, 13 years ago. This Christmas, I tell my wife, when it comes down to one thing that I don't hold back is experiences with the kids. This Christmas, we're probably gonna spend four to $500,000 on our Christmas. Last year was $300,000. There's one thing that I'm gonna do to bring the family together is something like this. You get to use your resources to create the family to come together. When I was thinking about as a 23 year old, one day I want my grandkids to choose to come to my place. I wanna build an estate where kids can get to play, swim, do whatever they want, and the in-laws can be in a complete separate house. So Christmas, Thanksgiving, summer vacations, all my grandkids want to come to me because I want to stay close to my kids and my grandkids. Next, build strong business networks. You know, connections is a, is a very big thing. Today, I just get a call out of nowhere, and this guy says, hey, Pat, one of our guys here that we work with, he says, hey, you know, there's this guy I just talked to, and he just came up to me, and he's been following by Tim for a while, and he wants to be our contact for Hollywood, for Grammys, for all this stuff. And there are people that want to be the agent because they want to, you know, they're seeing what's going on here where we have a lot of exposure on social media and the internet, but we don't have it on mainstream media. And they want to talk to you. This is a connection of a connection of a connection. When you build strong relationships, you know, I remember when first time I read a book about Bill Clinton running for office when he was a governor in Arkansas and he became the president beating George Bush Sr. He said he wrote 20,000 handwritten notes that he gathered on this Rolodex. Forget about all the bad things you may think about with Bill Clinton. The man was an incredible networker. He took his 20,000 contacts that he had gathered, Rolodex, wrote everybody a note. I am running for office. Here's the reason. I would love to get your support. And then boom, all these connections helped him eventually become a president. It doesn't matter what it is. Your contacts may one day be your kid's contact. Very important to build strong business networks. Being cautious of who you bring into the fold. Very, very uh, uh, interesting. You talk about who dates you, who dates your kids, and saying and breaking it down to find out who the family of the kid that's dating you. You know, kind of being a little bit more proactive. Hey, hey, daddy, I love this guy. Great, let me meet his family. You know, hey, mom, I love this girl. Great, let's meet her family. It doesn't matter what it is. You want to keep them close to see who they're getting close to. Friends, hey, I hang out with this guy named Joey. Great, bring him over for a pool party. And then you look, oh, Joey was smoking weed over there at 13 years old. Yeah, we're going to have a problem here. We got to figure this thing out. Now I know I talked to the family. We're being proactive. You got to be proactive. You have to stay paranoid. Ray Dalio said something very interesting this last week. I watched a clip of his, and he said, if you worry, you won't have to worry. But if you don't worry, you will have to worry. What does that mean? If you worry about the economy, you're probably not going to take a massive hit because you'll be overly prepared. 
He says, but if you don't worry about economy, your kids, how you raise them, finances, rates, you know, politics, if you don't worry about it, guess what? You're going to have a lot to worry because it's all going to impact you. The whole concept is to be a little bit cautious of who you bring into the fold. 